Uh, TikTok and Bin Laden. I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are following this. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know how many, but uh, about a few days ago, it started where uh, on TikTok, there appeared these videos where young people um, announced to the world that they have read Bin Laden's letter, a letter that Bin Laden published and was published for him in The Guardian, uh, which is the British left-wing British newspaper, um, and that these young people, uh, you know, the young people who'd read this basically, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, read, the, read the Bin Laden paper and went, well, whoa, Bin Laden was right. He predicted it. He saw it. Bin Laden's not the bad guy here. Bin Laden's actually right. He's identified all the post-colonial sins of the West. He was just one of us. He was just one of us social justice warriors. He was one of the people, you know, actually fighting Western colonialism, Western racism, Western elitism, Western cultural superiorityism, and indeed Western decadence. And a few people posted these Twitter video, uh, TikTok videos. They were watched by millions, I guess. And then more videos showed up and more videos showed up. Uh, and and uh, uh, so TikTok is now flooded with videos saying Bin Laden was right. The West was wrong. Bin Laden was just. The West was wrong. Bin Laden has a just cause on his side. He, he was the true in social justice warrior. Um, so you see a lot of these videos out there, all by young, all by young people, I guess, uh, and uh, uh, they are everywhere. Of course, we also know that the algorithms for TikTok are, are guided, at least to some extent, if not a complete extent, by by China, and 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 you'd expect China to encourage viewership and encourage participation of anything anti-American. Um, hard to tell if these people are doing these videos in order to get attention because this is the cool, hot thing to do right now. Hard to tell if these videos are being done because people actually believe in them. Uh, but there are hundreds, thousands of these videos on TikTok and uh, they are a, a reflection, I think, to at least to some extent, of the, the state of mind of much of, uh, not, not a majority, but much of uh, the, the youth in our culture. They hate Western civilization. And, and look, it's not surprising. Since they were babies, what, over the last 20 years, they have been taught that the Western civilization is horrific. It commits war crimes. It has subjugated the peoples of the world. It colonized the people of the world. Yeah, true, it was a hundred and something years ago, but 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 since then they just keep adding to it, and and the colonies continue in places like Israel, and um, and and the suffering that they inflicted on the world was so vast and so great that the people that were colonized are still suffering from it today. Um, they have since they were babies been taught that fundamentally the, the the west is decadent corrupt horrific you know oppressive privileged and that its wealth is a result of exploitation and stealing this has been the message of our intellectuals this has been the message of marxist but it's also been the message of the post-Marxist, if you will, the, 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 the anti-Marxist left, which is the, the woke, the politically correct, the CRT, the, the, the entire West, the entire Western intellectual establishment, which is dominated by the left and dominated by the hatred of the West. And the result is young people who hate the West and who now, thinking about it, reading what Bin Laden wrote, are sympathetic to Al-Qaeda. And not surprising, therefore, sympathetic to Hamas. Hamas is just Al-Qaeda, a local Al-Qaeda chapter. Nothing more than that. The uh, letter that they are reading is a letter that Osama bin Laden published. It's, it's titled Letter to America. It starts off in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Uh, and with a bunch of quotes in the Quran about fighting disbelievers. 
Uh, it is a letter that was published, as I said, in uh, 2002 after 9-11 uh, in The Guardian. It is, I have to say, because I've now read it, even though The Guardian is taking it off their website, interestingly enough, without any explanation, two days ago, The Guardian took it off the website, or yesterday, they took it off the website. Uh, it is a brilliant letter. I mean, you got to give it to Osama bin Laden. The guy was smart. The guy had a deep understanding of the West and its weaknesses. Uh, he had, now, maybe it's not him, but he had people who really knew English, people who knew and understood how to impact Western audiences. I mean, in many respects, this letter is, plays right into the hands of the anti-Western left. It, it, it understands the anti-Western left. It understands the grievances. It focuses on their grievances, even though Bin Laden is presenting his grievances against the West. These are not his grievances against the West because his grievances against the West, he wrote extensively about in the 90s and, and, and before 9-11, so we know what his grievances are. They're not exactly what's reflected in the letter, certainly not in terms of the priorities. This is a propaganda letter brilliantly crafted to sway people in the, in the West towards his side and to hate themselves. Bin Laden generally, if you read him, pre-9-11, cared very little about Israel. Israel was never a big factor that motivated Bin Laden. Bin Laden cared about the United States and its decadence. He cared about the secularization of the West. That was his focus. That is what he cared most about. And in this letter, he, 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 he starts off with the Palestinians in Israel. He doesn't care about the Palestinians. He cares about destroying America like he did the Soviet Union. In his mind, he believes he destroyed the Soviet Union. He cares about, again, decadence and secularism. But here's how he phrases it. This is, again, you got to admire, you got to admire his ability as a propagandist. Evil people have this great ability to identify the weaknesses in their opponents and to really go after them. So he says, he starts off the letter by saying, why are we fighting and opposing you? You know, because that was the big question after 9-11. Why? Why did this happen? And then second, what are we calling you to? What do we want you to do, in other words? That's the more interesting part you'll see in a minute. And what do we want from you? So here's, here's what he says, uh, why they're fighting. They're fighting us because the West has attacked Palestine. The Jews, it's not even Israelis, the Jews stole Palestine, they attacked Palestine uh, through the Jews, and they support the Jews, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking Palestine. Palestine is a, a property of Islam. Islam captured it from the Romans. They drove out the Romans, which is, you know, he, he, the Byzantine Empire, he associated with the Romans. He should say the Christians were there first, and they drove out the Christians. Uh, but he's not going to say that. He's going to position as the Romans. So he's manipulating history uh, in order to, to argue his cause, right? Um, and then he has a whole list, right? So, so Palestine is number one, but then beyond Palestine. You attack Somalia, and you attack this country. That you, you support the Russians in Chechnya. This is at a time where Russia was slaughtering Muslims in the thousands in Chechnya. You support oppression of the Indians in Kashmir. Uh, you know, you support uh, the Jewish aggression. Again, not Israeli, Jewish aggression against uh, Lebanon. And then he goes on and on. You know, um, you, prov you support oppressive Islamic regimes, Muslim regimes, that prevent the people from establishing Sharia law. Like, the people want Sharia law. And you, by supporting, uh, I don't know, the dictator of Syria, the dictator of Jordan, the dictator of Egypt, prevent the people from achieving real Sharia law, and instead they get these half-secularized Islamic countries. Then... These governments, these Muslim governments, are doubly evil because they sell you oil for pittance, for pittance, and you are exploiting them and getting all this oil. 
So everything, you know, everything, you know, the United States does, you, 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 the sanctions in Iraq, this is before the invasion of Iraq, the sanctions in Iraq have, have, have killed millions of people. Um, you know, a, a child dies every day in Iraq because of the sanctions you impose of them. Uh, you know, no, no reference to Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait, no reference to Saddam Hussein's brutality towards his own people. Forget about that. And on and on and on and on, all about how the West treats the Muslim world badly and always has. And of course, it's the American people, uh, you know. And then, then he get this is, God, this is so, this is so fascinating, right? He, he, one, he says, um, well, what about the fact that we attack civilians? You argue that we shouldn't be attacking civilians because they're not responsible. And he says, whoa, that's not right. He says, you're the land of the free. And therefore, you elect, you tell us, you elect your own representatives. And by electing your own representatives, aren't you responsible for what they do? And if you don't like what they do, why haven't you elected those representatives out? Why haven't you replaced your government? And don't you pay taxes to the American government? And aren't those taxes then used to, to, to support Israel, to kill Muslims, to do all these things around the world? So there are no innocent Americans. There is no such thing as innocent Americans. You are part of the war machine. And, you know, isn't it the American people who employ the military? Don't you pay the soldiers? So aren't you responsible for what your soldiers do in your name? Of course you are. So you're legitimate targets. And he says this is why the American people cannot, cannot be innocent of all the crimes committed by the Americans and the Jews against us. And he says, Allah, the Almighty, legislated the permission and the option to take revenge. He's arguing he's doing this all in self-defense. Thus, if we are attacked, then we have the right to attack back. Whoever has destroyed our villages and towns, then we have the right to destroy their villages and towns. Whoever has stolen our wealth, then we have the right to destroy their economy. And whoever has killed our civilians, then we have a right to kill theirs. Straight out of Hamas. So again, you get, you get the propaganda and how these kids are buying it. I mean, how is this different than what their professors are teaching them at the university? Aren't they teaching them the same thing? Aren't they teaching them exactly the same thing? That is America responsible for all the evils out there in the world? That is the Jews in America that have oppressed the Muslim world for all these decades, centuries? So I don't know why anybody out there is shocked by the TikTok phenomenon. It's not Chinese algorithms that are the problem. It's not TikTok that is the problem. The problem is our educational institutions. The problem is our attitude towards Western civilization and Western values. The problem is that we don't educate our kids in history, proper history. We don't educate our kids about what actually happened. We don't educate our kids about the virtues and values of Western civilization. So yeah, what you get is self-hatred. What you get is Bin Laden is just saying the same thing my professor did. The real enemy, the real enemy of the United States is not China. It's not even Bin Laden, because Bin Laden can be eradicated easily. It's not Russia. The real enemy of the United States are the professors at our universities teaching this garbage. And the people in the media, left and right, who support them? Who support them? who empty Western civilization and the values and what it represents of all content and blame the West for everything. The enemy is among us. The enemy is within us. The enemy is right here. And they are the ones who need to be dealt with. Once they are dealt with, any external threat is easy. But what is surprising is that these kids didn't read the whole thing, right? They, they, they didn't read the answer to the second question. Because Bin Laden posed two questions. Why do we do this? And what do we want from you? But what do we want from you? As for the second question that we want to answer, what are we calling you to? And what do we want from you? <laughs> One, the first thing we are calling you to 
is Islam. This is the religion of the unification of God. This is the religion that really gives you freedom. This is, this is the true religion. And we are calling you to religion. To a religion of manners, righteousness, mercy, honor, purity, and piety. It's a religion that shows kindness to others. We saw that on October 7th. Justice between them. Granting them their rights. We see this in Iran. You see this in Iran right now with the goals. I mean, they're granted all their rights. And defending the oppressed and the persecuted. Yeah. You guys have done a good job with the Palestinians and all the other oppressed in your Muslim world. It is a religion of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil with the hand, tongue, and heart. Yeah, right, 9-11. Oh, oh, what? It was just self-defense. He also says it is a religion of jihad in the way of Allah. And we don't discriminate. Again, playing to our left, we regard anybody, color, sex, or language as equal. But so that's the one thing. They call, they call us, they want us all to Islam. They want us, they're calling us to submit to Allah. Second, the second thing we call you to is to stop your oppression, lies, immorality, and debauchery that is spread among you. And, and, and this, is, this is good. Hopefully the, the, these leftist kids have read up to this point. We call you to a, well, maybe here the right might, the right might really embrace this. We call you to be a people of manners, principles, honor, and purity. To reject the immoral acts of fornication. No fornication, guys. Homosexuality, intoxicants, gamblings, and trading with interest. <laughs> trading with interest. Oh, man. He goes on to say, I have to read this because it's so relevant to my, you know. But, but notice, you know, we know what they do to homosexuals. We know what they do to fornicators, intoxicants, no alcohol, no drugs, guys, no gambling and no trading with interest. And this is what he writes. You are a nation who, uh, no, this is one. You are a nation that permits usury, which has been forbidden by all the religions. Yet you build your economy and investments on usury. As a result of this, in all its different forms and guises, the Jews have taken control of your economy, through which they have then taken control of your media and now control all aspects of your life, making you their servants and achieving their aims at your expense. I told you usury always, it's always there. Any, anytime you find an evil ideology, they're anti-usury right there. They're anti-usury right in the beginning. I mean, I wonder what, what, what Knowles would think of that paragraph. I wonder how much of it he would agree with, or Matt Walsh or any of those guys, right? You're a nation that permits gambling in all its forms. You're a nation that exploits women like consumer products or advertising tools calling up our customers to purchase them. You're a nation that practices the trade of sex in all its forms, directly and indirectly. Giant corporations, establishments, are established on this, under the name of art, entertainment, tourism, and freedom, and other deceptive names you attribute to it. And because of all this, you have, uh, you have been described in history as a nation that spreads diseases that were no, unknown to man in the past. Go ahead and boast to the nations of man that you brought them AIDS as a satanic American invention. <laughs> All right, um, you can see, hopefully, how, you know, how easily this could capture the imagination of uh, young people in the West. How easily this matches up with everything they've been studying and everything they've been learning and everything that's been part of their education. And how easily this can become an attraction to them and why in a conflict between the West, in a conflict between Western civilization and Bin Laden, they're gonna take the side of Bin Laden. I'm reading, uh, those of you coming in late, I'm reading from Bin Laden's letter to the American people written in 2002 
that people on TikTok are extensively um, uh, commenting on, and generally their commentary has been positive. That is, they're rallying around. Uh, you know, they, they think Bin Laden was right. Whoa, we read this. We we were taught our whole lives. Our parents told us Bin Laden was evil, was really, really bad. And now we read this and we go, whoa, maybe he's right. He actually is right. And not only is he right, he's completely consistent with what our professors at the university have taught us. God, Allah, or whatever you want to call him, help us. Um, this is a, 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 we have reached so low as a culture. We have reached so low in educating our children, so badly in uh, providing them with the ability to think and to study and to know their own history and to know the world that they are now on the side of barbarism. They are now on the side of primitivism. They are now on the side of complete debauchery, complete evil. They are now the side of those who are murdered and raped and tortured and, and set a fire to Jews and Arabs, for that matter, on October 7th. You know, it, it is hard to, I mean, it, it, it's obvious that this is what we were going to do. This is where we're going to go. I guess it's happened faster than I expected, or at least it's caught up with me in a way that I don't think any of us saw coming in the short run. This is the world in which we live. We live in a world in which Biladen is more popular than Western civilization, and where Hamas is celebrated for their post-colonial you know, uh, strength and, uh, and commitment. Uh, the, 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 the left in this country has really gone, you know, nuts and, and, and has now embraced the nihilism explicitly, completely, without any reservations. Uh, and and, and, and the, 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 the massacre on October 7th just has brought this to the forefront. And now they're embracing bin Laden. Why not? Let's, let's roll in all these massacres together. Let's roll in the evil of Islam uh, completely together.